you are a pervert. It's part two. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all been begging for me to talk about this Central Park 5 shit. And man, I've been telling y'all, nobody on YouTube was going to cook like I was going to cook. Perfect. I gave you, I gave you four and a half hours. Y'all go over the rumble if y'all need to see that. Perfect. But wait. It is worse. Boy, have black folks been lied to, and they passionate about that lie. They are passionate about that lie. One thing I do notice, though, man, is black folks hold they perverts near and dear. Word to brother polite. Now, man, I was just in the uh, in the conscious community. You know what I'm saying? I had saw a debate that Tommy was having with uh, Brother Jabari. Y'all seen my head debated Brother Jabari. You know, beige niggas swear, swear up and down about Egypt. You know, whole tough shit. Had to cook that dumb shit back in the days. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> uh, y'all might have seen me on Sarnetta's uh, cooking Brother Polite, Black Woman is God. Whole nonsense. He's a pervert. Pervert. You know what I'm saying? And y'all know I, I I will, you know, I keep this shit too real. This shit is too heavy for weak Nick. But I went over there with my brother Saab. You don't know me and Saab, you know. We 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 good money behind the scenes. We, we always talk, even though we don't agree on everything. But you know, this is a subject that niggas just seem to just really got their heart in it, and they just so blind to the obvious fucking truth. You know, niggas just they just have to make. Everything racial, man. And that's what I tell you, niggas, man. You have got to stop. Stop being distracted by racism. Real talk, man. You know, like black people will believe these lies and use white supremacy as a disguise. They are so blinded by, by their, their, their internal hatred for everything white that they make everything that's just obvious uh, 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 seem to be false because these niggas is black. These niggas ain't shit. <laughs> Y'all need to see part one. Y'all want to see part one? It's on here. You just go to uh, you go to where it's say Central Park Five Lives Part One. I mean, what the fuck? Um, or you can go to uh, 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 Rumble and watch the whole four hours. Like I said, man, most of these niggas who are so passionate about these niggas being innocent have not watched one, not one of the interrogations. To watch one of them, you have to devote at least three hours. That their interrogations were long as fuck. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't beat up. They wasn't coerced. We went through all that yesterday. They wasn't coerced. You know, uh, some of them had their parents there for the most part. You know, one of the motherfuckers brought they br the parents brought the little nigga up there to tell. What the fuck are we talking about? Oh, we wasn't. They wasn't even there. Niggas just niggas niggas believe in anything, man. Niggas are believing niggas believe in Santa Claus still, man. I, I don't I don't get it. This shit is just this shit was open and shut. You know. Um New York dropped the ball, man. Paying them bastards. Why the fuck are you paying perverts? I watched these little sick motherfuckers say what they was doing. I literally watched these sick motherfuckers say what they was doing, man. Perverts. 
good though. We watched it, man. Like, knock it off, man. Knock it off, man. We 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 gonna deal with it, man. The Central Park Five Lies Part Two. You know what I'm saying? Y'all share this on Facebook. Prepare to be pissed off. Hey, uh, let me shout out. Uh, shout out to Rob. Uh, this Rob. I let me just explain. Shout out to Rob. Appreciate you for the five. Uh. My man Rob J, I apologize. I was sending something to uh to one of my other homies named Rob, and I accidentally sent that to you. Uh appreciate you for you know saying for dead net on uh on uh Cash App. Um so this there wasn't no confusion, but I had accidentally sent that to you. It was supposed to go to another person, you know what I'm saying? But I appreciate you, Rob. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man. Oh, man, let me shout out. Uh, I just seen that uh, we got a sponsor. They say, oh, Jeff, you hate black women. Who the first person to sponsor today's show? A black woman. <laughs> Another lady coming through on the cash shop. Shout out to Happy Latina. With the dick. <laughs> she tired of you beta niggas. Royce, I need you to be on point two. Royce, I see you in the chat, brother. You know what I'm saying? I see you got to hit that super chat so we can highlight your joints. But, brother, you law enforcement, and you know where you met me at, fighting the case outside the courthouse. <laughs> so, hey, you, I know you know and you looked at this shit, and you looking at this shit as a black cop. You're like, are we fucking kidding here? Black folks just believe in anything. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Miriam sponsoring today's show with the $50 holler. We appreciate you over here, Miriam. She out doing you, brother. She's the mod money who going to double up for the rope. Fam, I just got three new robes. Three new robes. We going to cook today. Now y'all seen the last show was about four hours, so we gon' we gotta walk this shit down slow for the slow folks. Cause everybody, they they the railroad to black me. Bullshit. Shout out to Judge Joe Brown for calling out them clowns. Cause they, they wouldn't know shit if them niggas would have shut their mouth. They told on each other, dumb motherfucker. Shout out to RP over there, five. JB the Juggernaut for the fitty cap. Okay, well, uh, what is that? You were a six? What I can't, you know, I can't see church. You were eight and one fourth, you big head motherfucker. (laughs) That's not an an FBA scout, man. That's not an FBA scout, nigga. You got a beach ball on your neck. This nigga walking around with a flotation device on his shoulder. <laughs> Meat nugget head ass. <laughs> what is wrong with this nigga, man? This nigga got this nigga has a scout. <laughs> I wear an eight nigga, goddamn. Like an eight and a half in a fitted hat is like the equivalent of a nigga wearing a 16 in shoes. Like they gotta order your hats, nigga. You gotta take two hats together, nigga. Your brim about this big. God damn, nigga. God damn, man. You know what I'm saying? God damn, hold on. God damn, man. Let's get Royce together, man. Hold on, Royce. All right, Royce, I need you to follow along. And I'm probably going to need you to call in too, Royce. I got you. Because uh, shout out to Royce on the uh, cash app. I got to uh, break this thing down, man. Like, we got to start believing the facts, man. Take your emotions out of this shit, man. Let's deal with the facts. We're going to break this shit down. You know what I'm saying? You nigga say, nigga wear 16 in hats, bitch. Big head, motherfucker, man. Big head, motherfucker, man. Hold on, man. It's Uber Eats. Let me go grab my food real quick, and we'll be right back. Y'all, hit the share button. We going in.
Where you hurting? I got two bad knees and then in my My God, I feel You got what now? Two bad knees in my back. And is it hurting now? Yes. You can feel the pain right now. Yes. You sure? Look for the pain now. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise with us here tonight. God just healed this woman. God just woke up. You know, now the reason why I definitely had to do this is because um, it's, 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 it's rare. Well, it's not rare that we get lied to. But it's rare that we have black sources that disprove the social norm of believing certain things like this. I mean, the common thing for every nigga to believe is that these niggas will let free. They on BT. You know, let free because of their innocence. They they own BT and walking around here like they some type of fucking heroes. You know, even is going so far as saying some of them motherfuckers said I wasn't even in the park. That is some bullshit. That is some bullshit, and I'm just here for the bullshit. You know, you would think the KKK was attacking these niggas the way that you talk about. A lot of the cops was gay. I mean, uh, black. <laughs> Okay, a lot of the cops was uh was black, detectives was black, you know, um, you know the narrative that we would put is that you know this was white people did justice and then they found a way to blame Trump. You know that's when that's when you know you're dealing with old niggas, man. Old niggas probably raised by their moms, born Democrats. Quick to blame the white man for everything. If black folks don't do some bullshit, you know, you know, New York has its share of fucked up lies that everybody believe. You know, what was her name? Uh, Tamika, Tanika, Tamara, Mari, or whatever her name was. <clears throat> One lied about being raped by the KKK cops. Al Sharpton jumped on that and they had the whole city in an uproar. To this day, she had been sued and has a, has a, a lien on any, any type of money to pay back for those cops' lives that she ruined. Tawana Barley, Barley, whatever. Keep mixing that damn name up. Fuck her name as well. Just like uh, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, whatever you want to call her. Fuck her name too. But niggas just really want to tie Trump to all of this. You know, and I, I I appreciate Trump for standing firm, man. I'm not going to bend because you niggas stupid. And it just shows how passionate niggas are for a lie and trying to get a win on white people. Black folks are really passionate about trying to get this win on white folks, man. Almost to the point they end up looking stupid trying to do it. And that's what this situation is to me, man. You know, once I saw that cop start saying that these people are full of shit, it was a lie, none of that stuff happened, I went on my journey and started just digging. And I took days of looking up this shit. Like, damn. And I was so glad that the sources were black because first thing that these... Uh, so-called conscious niggas is going to do is just disprove the sources as being 
uh, uh, white, and that's the white media, and that's what they want you. To... Ah, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I've been meaning to ask these niggas, man. What are the quite the criteria of being a source? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What is the criteria of being a source? Because niggas seem to not believe testimony from the people who said it. They don't believe the blood, the semen that was on their clothing. We're going to get into all that. They don't believe they were in the park. They don't believe these niggas telling on each other. They don't believe in these niggas telling on themselves. Y'all want these niggas to be heroes. We have, I'm going to tell you right now, the black community has a horrible batch of heroes. Stop trying to manufacture us someone to idolize. This is a big slap in the face to everybody who believed that these motherfuckers was innocent. And they're not. <clears throat> now, I think we're using the wrong wording by calling them, uh, you know, Riz Apis. But they are responsible. This is what people got to understand. They're responsible. This woman did, she didn't rape herself. She didn't beat her own ass. They are responsible. It's just this, the same situation. Like <clears throat> I was saying on Sarnetta's show today. Y'all go watch it. I got bombarded by a lot of black power shit. It was just, they was all over the place. You hate black women. Uh, you know, I knew, I knew what I was walking into, but you know, this side, man, it's my man. So I'm, I'm going to entertain it. Because I know I'm standing on business. I, 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 I know what I saw. And I can't unsee it because you niggas don't believe it. That's one thing about the Democratic ass niggas, man. And them baby boomer ass niggas. They know how to unsee facts. This election should prove it. They, just, they unsee the border. Unsee the gas prices. Unsee the taxes. Unsee all this shit. Get Trump out of here. Fried chicken ass niggas, man. But I couldn't unsee this shit and still, okay, y'all y'all say these niggas are guilty, is, uh, is not guilty. I'm saying these niggas are responsible like a motherfucker. We saw, remember we showed, we, we left off what we left off at. You know, uh, um, you know, they tried to rape her and they couldn't do it. You know, it's like all of these things that they that they told on themselves for none of these charges stick. And again, they have a how can I say this? this they have a democratic city like Chicago where they're weak as hell on criminals. They'd be like, well, why did they pay them? I don't know. Your city's stupid. Chicago's stupid. We pay criminals. Chicago gave one uh, gang leader uh, for like a, I forgot, man. It was like a, it was some charge or they whooped his ass or something like that. I mean, an ass whooping comes with going to jail in Cook County. I don't know, but he beat, he beat, he beat our city out of like 21 million and put it back into the game. It was with the uh, Simon City Royals, man. It's a real small game, but he was trying to make it bigger. And you know that that you know these cities are stupid. You know, church check in, hit that like button. Shout out to EV, man. These cities are stupid. If you're stupid enough to give out, that's what you need to be mad at. Why is your city stupid enough to get these niggas this money when they did something? We already went, went over there. We're not exonerated. It was vacated. You know, we broke that down. Go to centralpark5.com. See, some niggas just don't want to know what happened. You know, shout out to Caesar D. I'm like, man, why is niggas acting like I just got like this big bias against black folks? Like, fam, 
This I just don't want to be lied to. This is an ob- this is a fucking lie. You know, you're like, oh, what? Well, you explain this. Well, explain why your damn city gave P Diddy the key to the city, New York. New York get New York is soft on per- on perverts at this point. You, you gave P Diddy the key to your city. Of course you're going to pay some goddamn rape. Shut the fuck up! Oh, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real. Nigga, that's what they was going to Why did they pay him? I don't know why your city's dumb. You know? I wouldn't have paid him shit. But shout out to Trump. They were like, yeah. So Trump still believes they get I believe they guilty. Yeah, talk about me. Shit. I don't believe these niggas. Every time I see them on BT, I'm like, y'all niggas stupid. And the main nigga that we showed y'all yesterday, the testimony of Corey saying Yusuf, the, the New York City councilman, was the official breast toucher and fondler of the damn jogger. Take the money out of it. Let's just say they got out of jail and they and they just regular people and they saw each other's testimony. You think Yusuf and Corey gonna be getting along? If Yusuf really didn't do that, be like nigga, I just saw you on the on the camera said I did all of this. They'd be fucking about to kill each other. The only reason why them niggas all get along right now is because of the bag. Money out of the equation ain't none of them getting along. They probably be back in jail for killing one another. Cause they all told on each other. Stop it. You all gotta stop it. I know you wanna win against the white man, but this ain't it. The Central, five, the Central Park Five are uh, uh, responsible and they needed to be in jail for what happened to that woman. Like I told, told uh, 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 Sarnetta, if I do bodily harm to somebody and lay them out in the middle of the street and let's say a drunk driver comes by and hits them, am I not Responsible for that murder. Yes. It wasn't my intent. But the results, the domino effect of my actions, the consequences increase because what happened to this unconscious body. And the, the the reason why this woman was risen is because y'all put her in the state of unconsciousness in the park. So you're going down. She could have been ate by a grizzly bear in the forest. It's y'all fault. This is how this works when you got some damn sense. Oh, yeah. Oh, listen, man. We know what happened. We, we know. You know? Shout out to Z, uh, uh, Zilla, man. Them niggas was part of it. Yes. They pulling out clothes. Come on, fam. You 
you niggas just want these niggas to be innocent. Me, I have no love in my heart for any pervert. Anybody who's a, a, a sex offender, I don't care about you. Anybody touching on kids, you know what I'm saying, doing any type of stuff like that, the women and all that, I'm not, you don't got my support whatsoever. So I feel Trump on that. This nigga, it was, he ain't the only motherfucker that was around with money. He was the only motherfucker around with money and some damn uh, uh, who stood on business and did what it, he was compelled to do and speak his goddamn mind and felt passionate enough to put $80,000 behind it. Fuck them niggas. Them niggas, was, them, niggas uh, them niggas should be registered sex offenders right now for life. I'm not buying any of this shit, man. But we're going to get into this, man. The Central Park Five Lies Part Two. You know, if y'all ain't see that part one, it was heavy, man. <laughs> All them niggas want to do is just keep blaming Trump. No, oh, nigga. Trump wasn't in that part. Trump wasn't in the uh in the courtroom. Trump was not a juror. Trump wasn't the judge. Trump wasn't the prosecutor. Trump was not the defending attorney. Trump wasn't the officer. Trump wasn't the detectives. Trump was a regular person with an opinion like everybody else. You be fooled out of your damn mind and think just because, oh, you're in New York when it happened that your opinion is valid. It's more valid than anybody else who can watch this tape for their goddamn self. What, I got to put on a Yankee fitted to watch the goddamn tape to see these niggas say it? What the fuck they say? Like, stop it. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Are you Kevin Richardson's father? Yes, sir. Also present are... I believe your parents. Now his parents is there. His parents are like. Um, and is this your father? His, his parents were there. Yes. The detectives who are in the room, Detective Arroyo and Detective. Sh it did a lot of telling, man. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to get some understanding, man. It did a lot. Like I said, you when you watch these uh interrogations, they're like three hours. I'm not gonna go through the whole three hours. If you want to know the truth, go look for it. But it's out here, bro. It's definitely out here. Gian, you've met them earlier in the evening, isn't that right? Yes. And did they take a statement from you? Yes. When they took that statement from you, did they give you the the rights that I've just read? You gonna get coerced with your parents right there? Stop it, five. Read to you before they took the statement? Yes. Okay. Have you had something to eat this evening? Yes. Have you been getting something to eat tonight? Yeah. Okay, you feel this is the nigga that had the scratch on his face. We're gonna get into him in a few. You all right? Okay. They was hung up. See, he's in there with all his parents. Like, nigga, how old was he? You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, man, you know, you still got the right to remain fucking silent. They tell you that shit. Your, your, your ass is smarter enough to know what the cops are and all this shit. Come on, man. We 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 know what was going on. We were shorties, man. We did a little dirt. We go here. People acting like these motherfuckers were toddlers, man. Fucking teens, man. You asked for soda, Luke. Yeah, now you know what kills me. They're like, oh, you could be a minor. You could be a minor, but you can't have. You gotta have an adult in the room when you talking. But then you could be fifteen and still get charged as an adult. The, that's one thing I don't understand about justice. Justice has got to make up their mind across the board. Can't try these motherfuckers like an adult and then treat them like kids. No. Treat them like adults from the get-go. Especially when they're doing adult shit. Especially when they're doing adult shit. Like running up on ladies in the park just jogging, beating them up, and fondling them. And the detective brought you a soda. Are you feeling okay? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Don't believe the Don't believe All right, G. They they not cohorse, but we gonna we gonna really go into this in the detail. Cause I know it's a lot of black power niggas that wanna see. I really wanna see what's going on. <laughs> Fuck ass shit, man. 
niggas just niggas just really get blindsided. Like I say, man, you gotta take this damn white supremacy, white man, boogeyman shit out your mind and stop being distracted from facts, man. Facts. You know, I can't hey, looking at them tapes, man. I can't unsee what I was listening to and be like, oh, you know what? They was coerced. Like that, that's an easy cop out, bro. Some of the motherfuckers volunteered and rode with their parents and drove up there to say the same goddamn story. They didn't all get their story together because they was not in the same room. To revisit the coercion story. Many people talk about the coercion that went on in the Central Park Five case, and they often state that police officers coerced these five guys. That's a lie. So the question is, is that the truth? If it is the truth, how do we determine that it is? Well, we have multiple clips from these guys in different interviews and documentaries that we can analyze and try and answer that question. Now, looking at the Burns documentary, you'll see lots of edited clips that seem to... Yeah, that Burns documentary, when I compared the Burns documentary to the pure footage, you can see that... Uh, when when the old boy Burns did his documentary, he was trying to make it persuasive to fulfill this narrative that every nigga is running with. Suggest that they say that they made up stories. Like I don't know these these guys that's that's there, so I'm just gonna. He was the nigga who had the scratch on his face from the lady. Make up something. He tried to say it was the police officer. Then he he was like, okay, 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 yeah, it was the lady. And, and include these guys' names. Kevin is saying this happened. You know, and trying to say this is the biggest goddamn hustler right here. He finessed his way into politics off y'all dumbasses. Y'all gotta feel like dumbasses, New York, for believing these niggas. And this happened. And they were stopping me during my retelling of. He looked like a pervert. Persian all eight. Any nigga with his haircut like that's a perv. Shut the fuck up. The events and saying, is this where you got the woman? Is that where? But you're not gonna go home until you give up, a, until you say a story. He gave me the names. I put them in. I couldn't tell you who they were, who they looked like. If he would have gave me a hundred names, I would have put a hundred people at the crime scene. No, you just put the five niggas that y'all all know each other and y'all all told on each other. You just told the truth. That's all. Now, if you remember correctly, you'll recall that I spoke about snitching in a previous video. Now, if you listen to that clip just a second ago, you hear Raymond Santana saying that police officers had given him names to put in this story that he made up. Isn't that worse than snitching? I mean, you're making up stories about other human beings. That I want to shout out Quiet Storm over there on the Rumble channel. Salute to you for the uh, the $20 Rumble. And they just wrote, salute, Jack. Your research made me look at the perverts totally different. They are guilty as fuck. Again, we went crazy for those four hours. Y'all tired me out. And I told y'all I had more that we had to go over. There is so much more to go over. Again, I saw all this shit. I can't unsee this shit. And I can't say that these niggas wasn't there. These niggas are all these goddamn heroes and all that. They are perverts. Perverts. And that's my stance on it. I told you. I'll stand on it. I say it to their face in front of their mama. I said to their face in front of their mama on camera in front of a church. I wouldn't give a shit. He said, I said to him on TV. You know what I'm saying? I if, if I knew where they live, I would ring their doorbell and tell them you're a pervert. Pervert. Real talk. Shout His out to Dave, man. Your friends, your neighbors, you're making up stories about them and getting them sent to prison. All because you believed the police officers? 
when they tell you that these other kids are telling stories about you, you're not supposed to believe that this is common sense. One Oh one. Every person in the hood knows this stuff back in 89. They knew this stuff. They were hanging out with drug dealers at the time. Hold on. We got a uh, quiet storms coming back, doubling it up, sponsoring us again with a $50 holler on rumble. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to that rumble. Cause eventually we're going to start moving everything to rumble. With a fifty dollar hollow rubber, say double up for the church. I appreciate you over there, church. We not done, man. I told y'all, we might be here to one in the morning. Y'all know how we do. We might be here to one in the morning. Michael Briscoe was selling drugs, and so was Jermaine Robinson. So we know that they were criminals in their midst. Steve Lopez wasn't a good kid. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these kids were of the streets. They knew the street codes. They're sitting here acting like they didn't know and snitching is okay. And y'all are cool with it. Why did you tell them something that wasn't true, that you hadn't seen? Because you was trying to get out of it and minimize your role, minimalize your role in all of this. Cause you let a lot of motherfuckers say they they say he wasn't even there. Get the fuck out of here, man. He was definitely there. We gonna get it to it. Again, I was just only guess just to save my own life. To get out of it. Get out of get out of there as quickly as I, I can as possible because I've been there too long as it was. Now, over the course of a few days, they rounded up thirty seven teens. They leaving the precinct. Where's the ass beating? Where are the bruises, the cuts, the abrasions? How is it that the police officers decided on these particular five? What was it about these five that police officers thought was different from the others? And he looked like he come from a good family, but you the main one. Titty toucher. He's the titty toucher out of the group. The other kids were black and brown as well. Why not arrest all 37 black and brown kids rather than just five? Well, 10 ended up being arrested. Five of them took plea deals um, and pled to robbery and assault and things of that nature. <laughs> okay. So there's other, there's other people that was charged that was wilding out in the park with these idiots. You know, but again, we talked about every somebody uh, go back. I, I can't remember. man. We went through so much information. What was all the things that was wrong with that lady, man? I know y'all said her skull was fractured. Uh, she had cuts, abrasions. I mean, they was good. They did the most on this lady. They lucky they didn't kill her. Why is it that these five were selected? The answer is simple. These are the names of the people who were there. These guys remembered each other, so they put those names in there. And I was like, how could they lie? So I was like, I'm gonna get them back. At that point, I told myself, I just, I just wanna go home. I thought I had the upper hand because here I was, I had a detective who was saying, I'm gonna make sure you go home. I was thinking that I was never gonna go home. I gave these people what they want to hear. You know, I lied. I lied. I say, well, you know, this is where it happened, at the reservoir. You know, I'm placing the scene of the crime at the reservoir. And, and he just, he doesn't really say, but he gives me this look like, what are you talking about? I just gave written statement just to satisfy. So you gave written statements. <laughs> like, fam, if anything, if anything, I would believe they got their ass whooped because they didn't make statements and they wasn't writing all this shit. You know, it, 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 I'm, like we seen what Nipsey Hussle's killer looked like going to court. That's what getting the shit beat out of you from the police look like. And, and then we watch, we're going to watch some of the footage of them uh, in, the, in, the, in the interrogation room, they're not, 
asking leading questions. These niggas are just talking away. Naming names. It's fine now. Just to get them out my face with it and trying to be on my way out they building. And afterwards, he had me sign on it. So I signed on it. So I was just like, uh, whatever, yeah, I had something to do with it. Just to get out of there. So then the question becomes, well, how did they make up stories that all kind of went together? And when they were on tape, how did they remember these stories? Because those tapes are unedited. There's no chops in the tapes. They seem to recall yeah, everything. Shout out to this black man who word did. Word. How does a oh, research? We're gonna go to we're gonna go to his actual documentary in a few. But this, I just want to give y'all a gist of where and how deep we're gonna dive into this case. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I could not unsee this, and seeing this just completely changed my mind. It's fucked them niggas. 15 year old kid or five 15 year old kids or multiple, not all of them were on tape, but how do multiple 15 year old kids remember the same story without making any mistakes? Um, yeah, this, this don't make no sense. Shout out to Marco. <laughs> so you're going to admit that you're guilty and thinking you're going to leave. This don't even make sense. Anybody would like, don't stop it, man. They were young, but they ain't stupid. When it comes to the cops. I don't know about some of you, but I've worked in the theater uh, as a kid. When I was about their age, I was made to remember songs. I was in the chorus and choir and having to remember those things required weeks worth of work. People expect you to believe that they learn this story within a few hours. <laughs> Fam, they all these stories, man. We're going to go into their stories in the paperwork in a minute, man. But realistically, man, they were there and they did something. To you. Nobody from nobody from BT, nobody that's sitting them down. OK, we know you didn't penetrate them. What did you do? And where were you and what were you doing to where they actually picked you up and you even get into the squad car? You got to watch part one when I showed you. Because a lot of people is coming in. This is part two. My church members watched part one. You seen the cops say how they chased them running down from the park. So they can't say that they wasn't there. He told you who the leader of their little crew was and everything. Black cop. Shit is... Come on, man. What there was, was... A whole lot of damn evidence. Hold on, let's go back, man. This is just this is just a little preview, little snippet. We're gonna get real heavy into this document. There wasn't coercion. What there was was a whole lot of damn evidence. And it's unfortunate that you know these movies. And again, shout out to Trump for standing on business because any other weak minded motherfucker would be like, oh, oh yeah, I'll stand to correct it. Like nigga, they were they were not found not guilty. Cases vacated. Oprah calls them the exonerated five. And y'all ran with it. See how black women put titles on shit? Black women made the Central Park Five movie. They're going to lead you into bullshit. You have got to fact check these women. God damn it. This is why I say women need headphones. They don't need microphones. All right, damn. Stop giving motherfucking women microphones and make them listen. This is crazy. Documentaries and Netflix series do not show the evidence. So let's go over the evidence. When those kids came out of the park, they were confronted by Officer Reynolds and his partner and um, the other 
female officer who was on the scooter. Um, they were able to catch five of them. Michael Briscoe, Kevin Richardson, Santana, Lopez, and Clarence Thomas. Out of those young men, Clarence Thomas gets put in the back seat of the car and starts crying. Two of the kids were crying that, and saying, I didn't do the murder, but I know who it was. It was Antron McRae, and I'll tell you where he lives. Did you start to cry in the police car? Yes. And did you start to say something to the police? That's what I began to ask, yes. Did you say that you knew who the murderer was? After they had said that the person was essentially dead, that's when I, then I said that. What did you say to them? I said that I know the person. They crying, telling. Like, stop it, fam. <laughs> telling on murders that ain't even happened yet. Like, little snitches, man. Little snitches, man. Who killed him? You know, I was crying and stuff. Because I remember as they came back, I seen Anton with the pipe, and they were saying that he was beaten over the head. And that's and I figured it was Antron since he came back with the pipe. Now, which one? Is Anton the one that, uh, is one of them dead? Because I, I, every time I Google the essential part five, as of today, it's only four of them. Is one of them dead or one of them in jail? Y'all let me know, man. It, it's so much. It's this is like information overload, but we gonna go into it. I mean, we got time tonight. Oh yeah, and I got the Red Bull on deck, so we here. Did you tell the police it was Antron? Yes. Now, when they said they didn't do the murder, my assumption, we all assumed that they were talking about the gentleman, and this guy was a teacher. His name was John Lachlan. We thought they were talking about him because he was beaten so badly, we assumed that they thought they killed him. Again, that was another person that was in the park, like I told you. They was whooping ass all through the park with weapons and shit. Let's go, man. <laughs> Niggas, are, they wasn't there. They just trying to frame us in black folk. The white folks see the color people. No, nigga, they seen the bodies. They look crazy little niggas with weapons. So we round up 37 of them and we found out who the hell did what because they told on each other. Which is what happens in most criminal cases. Niggas talk too damn much. So this is the beginning of these kids beginning to no bruises, no, no cuts, no nothing to incriminate themselves. And a lot of people think that the police coerced these kids into talking about this stuff. And they did not. They offered up this information voluntarily, as you just saw with Clarence Thomas. He admitted to beginning to cry in the police car and automatically he goes into telling on himself, telling on everybody else is there. Who starts to snitch next? And the next um, person who starts to, to, to confess is Kevin Richardson. They had found the body of Patricia Miley. Well, I wouldn't say body because she was alive, but they found her very badly beaten. And so they needed to find out if anybody who was in the park at that time saw anything. So they wanted to question the boys because that's just police procedure. So they. I'm so glad a black man did this motherfucking, uh, did this study and put this website together. I'm talking about, we went through, I showed you all the list of the resources. You could go check through all this. Like if you really want to know, like ain't nobody going to be passionately spending they, the dude who put this together and the books like this it's not just, I've, I've dedicated probably about two days just researching all of this shit. 
But for him to have been the researcher, the original researcher, I mean, this dude had to have been taking months to bring this information out here. And I'm surprised. Well, I know why black folks don't want to cling to it, because it's against black folks. And they bullshit. You want to believe just because they're children that they were that they were uh, taken advantage of. No. Question two of them, Clarence Thomas and Lamont McCall, with their parents, and they didn't know anything. So they let them go home. Kevin Richardson was the third person that they questioned. And Kevin Richardson had a scratch on his face. So the police asked about the scratch. Remember, I kept telling you about Kevin's scratch. Scratch. Now, contrary to popular belief, we did not ask him about the female genre. That's not the way that we operate. They never asked him about the damn female jogger. How did this come about? We get their full statement first, and then we go back and we ask them more questions. And the the thing that we do is we get the answers before we ask them the questions. This way we know when they're lying. He had a scratch under his eye. And one of the detectives said to him, well, how did you get that scratch? And he said that my partner, Bobby, scratched him when he was arresting him. So the detective said to him, okay, Bobby's next door. I see y'all in the chat room. They're not FBA. More than likely they're not. <laughs> More than likely they're not. We're talking about New York here. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely, it's, it's a good chance that a lot of these motherfuckers ain't FBA. You know what I'm saying? But no, let's not turn this. We'll have the FBA to tether debate another time. I know, I know y'all niggas could wait to do that, man. <laughs> I see y'all, man. But Let's just stay on course, man, because I know that the black power community is very passionate. Me, boy, it do justice. Yeah, you look like a damn dummy. Let me talk to y'all about how uh, how stupid black folks are when it comes to these type of situations. Wait for the facts and investigate the facts and formulate your own opinion. I keep telling y'all about this one situation. In Chicago... We got, uh, it's the east side of Chicago on, I want to say, Dirty Folks, you in the building. Tell me if I'm getting this right and accurate. Was it seven, It was 75th, maybe 75th or 71st in Jeffrey by the train tracks down the street from Italian Fiesta. There was um, a barber who was walking down the street acting the ass uh, with the cops or whatever like that. And the cop was trying to uh, talk to him and trying to calm him down or whatever like that. It was two lady cops. And this is how the story was presented to the public. Two, two cops shoot and kill black man on 70-something in Jeffrey. Every activist in Chicago, they was out. Bullhorns jumping on cars, stopping traffic and everything. Then the body cam footage came out. Then truck driving on top. Then the body cam footage came out. And what did it show? They tried to stop him and restrain him. He reaches for his waist and he got two goddamn guns on his waist. And two women cops shot him down. protests, Facebook posts, everything that was out going around talking about the cops, this cops, that, 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 that all went silent. And the man, and all of them damn, all of them damn activists and protesters didn't apologize to the people for not having the facts. You know what niggas did? What niggas always do? Unseen it. I don't have that ability. I'm not, I guess I'm not a real black person because I don't know how to unsee fuck shit. And who was the first nigga to bring that shit to YouTube when that shit happened? Me. I told you. 
Wait for the facts. You were so happy to try to get one on it and it wasn't even a white cop. It's two black lady cops. And then they showed the, bottom, the body footage on the news for the world to see. He had two big ass guns on his waistline. About to grab him. He was a barber over there at the barbershop wilding out on the police. And they clapped his ass. Niggas was out. I'm talking about about to tear the city up, stomping on cars and all that shit, right? Bullhorns and shit. They already about they about to start printing up the merch. Crickets the next day when that shit came out. That's what I'm telling you, man. Wait for the facts before you start jumping off on the fuckery. Better go ask him, and you had better be telling the truth. At that point, Kevin Richardson said, okay, it was the female jogger that scratched me. When he said that, because none of us were expecting it, it was almost like a bomb went off. Now we realized, okay, we got a different problem on our hands. We just let two of them go. Exactly. So they was just talking about the other dudes who got beat up. They didn't even implement them with that jogger to do start running his mouth. So this point is very significant because they didn't tell Richardson about the jogger. He didn't know about the female jogger. He simply gave that information up. Now, this is what sunk the ship, the whole Central Park Five ship was sunk by Kevin Richardson in this moment. And you have to remember when Corey was giving his testimony, he also talked about Kevin getting scratched in the face by the lady. Steve. When Corey talked about the scratch, Park 5 ship was sunk by Kevin Richardson in this moment. And you have to remember. And then here's another thing I want people to understand, because I was talking to all them people. It was just so many people coming at me at once uh, on the Sarnetta's channel. And they're like, well, they, you both have a parent in the room. If your kids are out there attacking people beating people in the park for no reason and robbing people, you're obviously not a good parent and you probably can't get in touch. You're probably not the easiest person to get in touch with in regards to your kids that's out here terrorizing people. So what are they supposed to sit back and be on a hunt for the parents all day while we got these little bastards here? You know what I'm saying? They're going to ask them some questions. Corey was giving his testimony, he also talked about Kevin getting scratched in the face by the lady. Steve ripped up heads with his knife. That's what made her mad. And that's when she started scratching him. Oh, what's the name? Kevin. The truck driver just had a Chicago mining gang. I'm a part of the church. <laughs> kind of. Federal, Federal Bureau of Investigations do you work for? <laughs> Niggas, are you in a gang? You, <laughs> you know that? Uh, 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 I would like the, uh, the right to remain silent. I'm a part of the church. That's what you do. Uh, you can speak to my lawyer. This nigga gonna ask me some incriminating church. <laughs> We about to go there, nigga, powered up, nigga, fuck yeah! Like, fam, these niggas ain't, they know what's going on, man. By Kevin Richardson in this moment. And you have to remember, 
when Corey was giving his testimony, he also talked about Kevin getting scratched in the face by the lady. Steve ripped up heads with his knife. Steve had a knife. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I knew it was one of them niggas that had the knife, man. That's what made her mad. And, it's, and that's when she started scratching him. Oh, what's the name? Kevin. Now, when did they get together and, and share this story to tell the police officers? Now, if you watch um, the, the Burns documentary, they act like he got hit by an officer. And this never happened. But then you have to think about how they, too, would get together and come up with the concoct this story of him getting scratched by the jogger. Both. Corey Wise mentioned his face getting scratched and he mentions it himself. And then later when they're doing the documentary, they act like this never happened, like they never came up with this stuff. It's amazing. Now, this is what the Netflix series doesn't tell you. This is what the Ken Burns documentary doesn't tell you. This isn't what the Central Park Five book tells you. None of them tell you this significant piece of information, but it is the loose lip that sunk the ship, so to speak. And they all went on to tell on one another. <laughs> they rolled this shit out, man. They finessed the fuck out of New York, man. They got y'all goofy ass. These guys are the most celebrated snitches in black history. But eventually, it wasn't just about them talking on camera or behind closed doors. At some point before he was picked up, Corey Wise was telling people in the street that the police were looking for him. He was approached by two of his friends, Ronald Williams and Shabazz Head. They were told by Wise to get the hell away from them because the police were after him. So they walked away. But a little while later, they ran into him again and they asked him why the police were actually after him. And Wise responded, you heard about that woman that was beat up and raped in the park last night? That was us. So he told Shabazz Head and Ronald Williams. So other people in the neighborhood telling the police what he said to them with his dumb ass. Oak Summers told on Cabrini government go ahead in 94. Gov. Okay. Oh, the, the Gov and, and Cabrini. Oh, okay. <laughs> who later got on the stand and testified to this. Later, just before the trial, Corey was on the phone with um, Melody Jackson, who is the sister of one of his friends, and he called from jail. So apparently Melody didn't want Corey to do any prison time. She wanted his uh, court case to go well she took this call from wise from rikers island when he was in rikers she asked him hey Corey, did you you know did you do what the the newspapers are saying that you did Corey's response to her was that he didn't rape anyone he only held her legs down while kevin puffed her now why don't all of these so-called fact checkers never bring up this phone call? This ain't got nothing to do with the court. This ain't got nothing to do with the interrogation room. This is him on the phone with a bitch while he's in Rikers. He's there. He held her down. What are we doing? Where's all the people from Sidenetta Channel? We gonna blame Trump? How? This call! This call! So the call is fake too. 
Now, this woman, Melody Jackson, thought that this information would be helpful to Corey. Because the calls are recorded! For quality control purposes only! So if you're telling me they got a transcript of the call, we're supposed to unsee it, unhear about the call! Because it proves that Corey was innocent. He didn't have sex with the woman. Okay, that's fine. You're responsible. You get the same charge as that nigga. You helped him. However, we all know that holding a woman down while someone else penetrates her is, it makes you an accomplice. You're complicit with everything going on. This is exactly what I was telling the conscious community over there inside that studio. And everybody knows I can't stand perverts. I'm going to do this story worse than I did Jeffrey Dahmer. Let's go. So you are an accomplice to rape. So even with her doing that, and she did testify as well. She had testified to this conference, having this, had this conversation and, uh, you know, the phone records do show that he made that phone call. It also must be noted that none of the boys admitted to having sex with the jogger. They may have simulated sex. But mm, nobody talks about that. I, you know, I was on Saturday and China. People look at me like I'm stupid when I, they're like, I ain't never heard nothing about this. You didn't hear about them simulating the sex, trying to fake hump because they like, oh, they didn't want to look like punks. And then here comes the real, the, 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 the rapist of the year, Mateus, he comes through and just slaughters shit. Shows them how it's done. Are you crazy? Niggas, I, this is how I know niggas really didn't look into this case. They heard of it. You heard of it. And it was enough for you to hear me like, yeah, they're, they're just doing our brothers wrong. No, these are not my, if these niggas are your, your brothers, you're not my brother. Cause I don't rock with, I don't rock with no LGBT niggas and I don't rock with no sex offenders or perverts. Keep that shit over there. I don't give them the benefit of doubt. I doubt the benefit of them. I'm good. Keep that crazy shit over there. But they didn't penetrate her. Then you got on top of her. Did you have your pants down when you did that? No. Did you have your fly open? Yeah, but um, my penis wasn't in her. What happened? I just, like, my penis wasn't in her. I just, I wasn't, I didn't was, put nothing in I didn't put nothing to her. Well, what oh, you got? What coercion? They beat, they beat it out of her. They're beating it out of him right now. They're beating it out of him right now. With his parents sitting down with him. He's getting, he's getting, this is what, if this is what beating, beating a confession out of him looks like, my God. This is how New York beats a confession out of you. Conversation. And Stop punishing that man. He, he's an innocent man. Stop beating this confession out of him. And, uh, you know, the phone records do show that he made that phone call. It also must be noted that none of the boys admitted to having sex with the jogger. They may have simulated sex, but they didn't penetrate her. Then you got on top of her. Did you have your pants down when you did that? No. Did you have your fly open? Yeah, but um, my penis wasn't in her. Yo! Yo, we gonna be here all night! You get, you get, you get them conscious community motherfuckers over here tonight. The, the boy just said, yeah, he had his penis out, but he didn't put it in. But they looking at me like I'm crazy. Do you realize I was just in a chat room on a live stream getting, I'm talking about, I'm every motherfucker, they coming from everywhere. Oh, you a goo. You vote for Trump. Fail. 
I watched the tapes and you didn't. Y'all giving them these softball interviews. Let one of these niggas want to interview with me. I'm asking them what you do in that park. Who touched the breasts? Who touched the legs? What you over there humping on her for? And, and you still think you shouldn't go to jail? When she ended up actually getting resaped? By an actual resapist? No. No. And I'm, and I'm opening up the light. We're here all night. I got a whole case of Red Bulls. We're going to be here all night. So if you want smoke, I'm here. You get over there at the side of the TV and you tell them conscious community people you come over here and come watch the damn truth now. All them goddamn baby boomers like this shit. Like this was impossible. How a little old nigga from the south side just cracked the code on this shit all easy like this. This is, this is a layup. It's a damn layup. Who did it? Who did the documentary? A black man did the documentary. Motherfucker. We gonna get it. We even got to the documentary. Yet. This is the snippets. We gonna, we gonna go through the whole documentary tonight. So you get them niggas over here. Tonight, you get them on Twitter, you get them over here. I won't smoke. God damn it. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna come at me and defend these perverts? Hell no. Don't make me do a part three. I don't, I, fam. You're about to piss me off. My heart, my heart, my heart rate is up. You're about to piss me off. I can't believe niggas get, got mad at me and not the perverts. Did you hear what these little niggas said? See, I want to interview them and play the tape next to them. That's your mama back there? And you saying this in front of your mama? When did they beat this statement out of you? It makes you an accomplice. So you are an accomplice to rape. So... Even with her doing that, and she. All right, listen, listen. You know what? We're going to do part two. I'm not going to promise that it's not going to be a part three. Because today's argument with the Kaja community made me that mad that I know I saw the fucking truth, and they more mad at me than these niggas who did this shit. They did this shit. Make sure y'all subscribe to the Rumble channel, man. We streaming right now on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble right now. Let's get the Rumble subscribers up. Did testify as well. She had testified to this conference, having this had this conversation. And, uh, you know, the phone records do show that he made that phone call. It also... Hold on, man. We, we, I got I to gotta, I gotta get off this hot sweater, man. And, and y'all stop... Hey. Listen, we're going to go there. I know we get some more sponsorships in here. I will break out the new robes. I got some beautiful new robes. These motherfuckers are nice. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me change shirts because I'm sweating. I'm sweating like an animal over here. And I'm, I, I'm still, I'm still not, 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 um, uh, we still warming up. So let me, let me, let me go change, change shirts real quick. And we coming right back, man. Coming right back. <laughs> I see, hit him in his face And I still back for that little bar I popped his ass like in the cage Yeah Turn me on who is on Baby J, 456 Fake the R.I.T Cause it's all like a V.C. Scrape for bomb hell That little dude ain't hit no shit Just got my mama test I could go ice on my wrist Post to play with crayon No controller, we got sticks You know I have remote Don't match the move, you better not flinch Slide down with your move, he round the bench yeah. How he be with me, but his pocket full of lint yeah. Ten toes in the mud, I been dancing since I was six yeah. Grew 
walk him down with that switch. Lil' do it like a clown, see his interview on Twitch. How he take a shot and hit the goal, you know he meant. Put a belt and straight the ass. You, you know be regular crash. No face, no case, with a push out the man. Pull up, pull up, I'm screaming through the dash. Lead on that we country, cause you know we know for taking a fast. Screaming love and feel it, yeah, you know we know. Stepping on shit, you feel me? Yeah, long live the members. Long live the Glock. Before the RT got shit on me. You feel me? Yeah. All right, man. All right. We got that blue, bitch. We got that blue one in, man. We got that blue one, man. Hold on, where my head at? We about to get in this shit, man. All right, I don't feel right unless I got my Trump hat on. Cause I hear Evo Trump. Damn right. Damn right. I'm fucking with the truth. Fuck all this dumb shit you talking about. So must be noted that none of the boys admitted to having sex with the jogger. They may have simulated sex, but they didn't penetrate her. Then you got on top of her. Did you have your pants down when you did that? No. Did you have your fly open? Yeah, but um, my penis wasn't in her. What happened? I didn't, my penis wasn't in her. I just, I wasn't, I, I didn't put nothing in I didn't put nothing to her. Well, when you... It's a lady. Oh, he's not talking to a big bad buff. He ain't even. This ain't even a situation like on uh, on Minister Society. It was like you said you got the liquor at eleven o'clock. See, you know you fucked up, right? <laughs> you, you know you fucked up. This is a lady talking to them. You got on top of her. You got on top of her so that you could have sex with her, right? Not really. I was just like, I just doing it so everybody know. I was just, I wasn't like really doing it. You said you were just doing it so that everybody what? Like everybody just like, just know I did it. Well, how long did you, when you got on top of her? Oh, you felt peer pressure. Okay. You're still stupid. You had your penis out of your pants? Yes. And it was between her legs? No. It was against her? Yeah. And did you rub against her? Yeah. Did you have an erection? No. Mmm. Now, Tom Nutter and them really fought me on this. I ain't heard about this, brother. I'm like, bro, they couldn't get it up. They would have did what Mateus did if they could have got it up. We going there. We going there, man. We're going there, buddy. We're going there. There was also lots of other evidence. Blood evidence, which... These the... They fought me so hard. It wasn't no blood. If you wasn't in New York, you don't know. Nigga, please. They, on this website, they got all of the court documents and the blood results on this website. CentralPark5.com. Let me show y'all again. Some people may not have seen, um, may not have seen uh, Virgin uh, uh, Part 1. Some of y'all didn't see Part 1. You go to this website, Central Park 5. Just go to the, the evidence section of it. CentralPark5.com. You just go to the evidence section. I mean, wow. You're gonna all of this. This I'm telling you, you if you you're gonna you're gonna be I, what I'm doing right now is I'm opening up your mind to go on a safari into this case. Come back, report back to me. And you tell me you believe that these niggas is innocent. The, the, the when the DNA was collected, they got everything. 
Rape victim of the attacks found rolling in two inches of water. Fam, it's so much shit going on with this case. Informant that Reyes is a homosexual and a liar. You're going to find out so much shit that you didn't know about this damn case. That's just the evidence section. You know? And I don't think this dude is making a dollar off of this. He just wants the truth to be out. We already went through the shit with uh with the girl because she's a lying ass bastard who, who who stirred up all this controversy, making y'all think that oh yeah they were doing they were done wrong. Get the fuck out of here. Them boys could have brought some pussy if, if they uh were that bad and need like. Come on, I know pussy is the best thing, but taking it is crazy. Just find a pro and pay her. Fam, they was just sick. I don't get it, man, because the young broads in our hood was all banging, was banging everything anyway. You ain't have to do none of this. These broads was loose. Well, I had my first piece at 13. And, and the bitch was wild experience. Oh man, the hood. We was uh, we was adults at twelve. Knock it off. This shit is crazy, man. Let's go back. We gonna we gonna we gonna continue. I'm gonna keep this website handy too. We gonna we gonna go back into this website, but let's get back into this, man. And doesn't get mentioned by the media. So there were blood stains on Santana's right sneaker. Yusuf Salam's fam, you you gotta watch this side of that interview, man. Cause like I said, it's information overload. I didn't have every goddamn, and they want me to just they wanted me to do this show on his show. I was like, dude, just wait. I'm 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 coming through at at eight o'clock, and we're gonna go live, and we're gonna cook on this shit. They just couldn't wait. I'm like, dude. There was no blood. There was no blood. Fam, you go on this website, go to the uh, website evidence. You can see all of the blood tests. And a lot of people don't know that. Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, DNA forensics was a relatively new technology to solving crime. So they were, they were not proficient in it as they are now. They didn't master it like they have now. So a lot of the tests they were doing were coming back in, uh, inconclusive, you know. But where you get blood from, and 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 uh, it has hairs. The ladies' hairs are gonna uh, pop up, and then y'all like they weren't even in that park. There was also lots of other evidence, blood evidence, which again doesn't get mentioned by the media. So there were blood stains on Santana's right sneaker. Yusuf Salam's jacket. And blood stains on Yusuf, Mr. New York Councilman. You idiots got finessed. <laughs> on Lopez's underwear. Hold on, what was on, on his underwear? On Lopez's underwear? There were blood stains on Santana's right sneaker. Yusuf Salam's jacket. And on Lopez's underwear. Blood stains on Lopez's underwear. And you, you're not going to believe at how many black people attacked me like I was an idiot for saying this. This is how I feel like I'm really living in the matrix, bro. How in the hell? So I'm supposed to I'm supposed to hear this, see this, and not investigate this and believe you motherfuckers? Cause y'all done put these idiots on BET. I'm about to overdose tonight on these goddamn Red Bulls. This is delicious. I told him, I'm like, dude, they had blood. There was never no blood. 
See, he ain't from New York. We from New York. We know what I'm talking about, my man, bro. You ain't even watched the damn confessions. You, you're hearing it from, I know these brothers. I've talked to these brothers. Those brothers are lying to you. They got $40 million, 40 million reasons to lie to all of us, nigga. You better keep the lie going for 40 million. <laughs> you better, you better keep the lie going. Lots of other evidence. My girl was telling me, shout out to OG, man. My girl was telling me, shout out, baby girl. She's probably watching right now. Telling me, yeah, I need to switch to Celsius. She bought some Celsius. She said she was some nasty. I like these motherfuckers, man. I'm going to try Celsius and see what I've, I've heard some, some shit about them, though. You know, but I like, I like Red Bulls, man. Gives me wings. Makes me see clearer. Blood evidence, which, again, doesn't get mentioned by the media. So there were blood stains on Santana's right sneaker. Yusuf Salam's jacket. And on Lopez's underwear. Sick. There were also semen stains that were found in the underwear of McCray and Richardson. So what they was just walking around and the park. Somehow. Just, they, they was just running around the park just jacking off. I mean, like, we, let's be real here, man. Again, they not understanding this was a new scientific method, and they 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 have not mastered it. It's not like it is today. They're trying to act like DNA was just like it's clean cut like it is today. It's purely mastered at this point. They can tell you. They can tell you who your ancestors are at this point. They couldn't do all that shit back then. This is when it first just came out. Tana had semen on his sweatshirt. All niggas was worrying about was hair and fingerprints back in them days. DNA was new. And then there was the evidence of hairs. They found hairs that were consistent with the female jogger's hair on Kevin Richardson's clothing and on Stephen Lopez. You better sign that up! People over here, get that. What was his name? The uh, who was I talking to? What was uh, the the usher, the deacon? What was what's the name? Man, they was lighting me up. Like I'm just like I'm full of shit. All right, we don't, we we just this is just the teaser. We about to go into the whole documentary. I got the website. I got it's so many things. We talked about the other website. It's another website, Central Park Jogger Accuser Bro, Apostle, bring the Apostle. Where is he at? If that wasn't enough, you also had soil on the victim, McCray, Santana, and Richardson. So we got fecal matter. We ain't, we're just getting started. Fecal matter on two niggas and the victim. You sick best pervert. Dirty draws, little boys. Now, it should be noted that DNA evidence was a new science. Yep. It had only first begun to be used in 1985 overseas and came to America in 1987. So 87, this is 89, they only had, it was only in, it was only in the States for two years. That's just two years before the Central Park case. Furthermore, the methods used to get trace evidence changed considerably in the 1990s so in this particular case you find that there's a lack of conclusive evidence on the blood 
we're gonna go. We, we're just this is just a warm up. We about to really get into uh, to the whole documentary on this, so I can show you that this is again salute to the black free thinking straight black men who want to investigate truth, no matter if it's against our own. The facts, let the facts be the facts. So all the blood that's found on them for the most part was inconclusive. They don't know whose blood it was. Exactly. Exactly. But the fact that they had blood on them at all and semen. <laughs> nah, nah, they couldn't Google the blood and it got Semen. When you look at the paperwork that's on the website, it says spermazoid. I ain't never heard of a spermazoid. I never knew that there was a such word as spermazoid till I seen this case. Spermazoid. That's what it's going to say. They're going to identify the spermazoid to Kevin. And these people are like, spermazoid. I've never heard of that word until investigating the Central Park Five case. Fuck out of here. Should give you some amount of pause, especially when some of it was found in their underwear. What is semen doing in your underwear and blood right after it? It's just a coincidence. Before they before they came through there, they just had a jerk off fest and decided, you know what? We got a lot of energy after the jerk off fest. We finna go to the park and go beat up on some people. Stop it, fam. So as you can see along with the testimony you had physical evidence why is that spermazoid i think it, i'm gonna zoom in <laughs> this is the paperwork man it's like you know we we, we 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 do all this paperwork and research on everybody else but not the central park five they no way they didn't do it for park case furthermore yeah, it sounded like a Hassan, uh, like a Bambada. They they just left Bambada's crib. That's why they had the damn uh, uh, sperm in their drawers. They just they just left Africa Bambada's Vaseline fest. The methods used to get trace evidence changed considerably in the 1990s. So in this particular case, you find that there's a lack of conclusive evidence on the blood so all the blood that's found on them for the most part was inconclusive they don't know whose blood it was but the fact that they had blood on them at all and semen should give you some amount of pause especially when again let these motherfuckers tell it in the college community there's just nothing that ties them to this lady nothing Everything is just coincidental. The testimony's not real. The woman being beat up by them, they wasn't there on the scene. The hairs, the blood, the semen, the fecal matter, you know, telling on each other, the crying. <laughs> like, all of this, none of this stuff puts them there. Some of it was found in their underwear. So as you can see, along with the testimony you had physical evidence why is that not in the netflix series why is that not in the newsreels why is that not being asked of these guys when they do interviews because people don't want to hear the truth that's why exactly man y'all make sure y'all subscribe to this rumble my nigga Follow me on Twitter. Get right or get left. We out.